All right, guys, in this video, we're gonna go over how we remotely control our Powerwall using the Tesla REST interface that comes with the Tesla Energy Gateway. So this will allow you to control your Powerwall um, like with an expert mode so that you can um, turn on reserve mode or turn on backup mode. And then we'll pair that with the Windows Task Scheduler so that we can do this on a schedule. So if we need to do it at 5 p.m., 9 p.m., or whatever your peak hours are. So the reason I wanted to do this video today is because uh, this week in the Facebook group, there were at least two posts that said um, something along the lines of, my power wall is not charging when I expect it to. I'm on a time of use plan. It's the off peak time and my power wall is discharging. Or people are asking, how do you automate uh, how to charge and discharge the power wall? So I think this is probably one of the most common problems people encounter, and it's not really something that people research when they buy a power wall. Um, they just think, okay, I'm gonna get the power walls, I'm gonna get on a time of use plan, I'm just gonna schedule my peaks and off peaks, and little do they know, uh, the power walls aren't extremely good at doing like say multiple peaks like if you have a 5 a.m. Uh, to 9 a.m. plus a 5 p.m. and 9 p.m. then the current software doesn't support it. And while it's an issue that Tesla has not really addressed yet. It is in their documentation to say um, how they treat um, off-peak and on-peak in the time of use plan. So if we just read the, the print on the Tesla documentation website, it'll say, in the Tesla documentation, it says it right here, the power wall will charge from excess solar during off-peak and shoulder if required. And the keyword here is excess solar. So those who have excess solar, excess solar means uh, the amount of energy from your house uh, is kind of low and that the solar is exceeding um, that amount of energy. So if you have excess solar during the off peak and shoulder, the power wall will charge. Um, what that means is if you don't have excess solar, like if your house is using uh, more than what solar is producing, then the power wall will not charge. So this is what's guaranteed by Tesla. And also says power wall will discharge during peak and discharge in any other periods to make room for solar based on energy forecast. Um, so as an algorithm, that's what they're calling the energy forecast. So it's gonna discharge at random points of time that it deems necessary and it will charge when it thinks it has excess solar. Um, so that's what you get when you read the documentation. So I think this is one of the most frustrating things about owning Powerwall is that had you not um, researched this beforehand, nobody probably would have told you about this type of issue. So uh, one way to fix it, which I'm gonna show you in this video, is changing the reserve mode to 100% in the off-peak time, this ensures that the charge is, uh, all of your solar energy is going towards the power wall. And if you do that, um, you can also have a programmatic interface using Python script, Windows Task Scheduler, um, and uh, that will allow us to change the reserve mode either at 100% or 0%. And if you match that with the price schedule mode, then you will be able to change the um, power wall. Uh, you'll be able to change the schedule remotely and without having to use the cell phone app. So let's go into that. It's 8 a.m. and we're in our off-peak mode. Um, our peak modes will start at 2 p.m. Um, and you can see here the solar, all of the 
solar is going to Powerwall and the grid, uh, the home is taking. And that's good for me because I'm at 25% charge, but it's Friday, so it's near the end of the week. Um, so we should be good. I'm gonna check out the customize menu. All right, we're gonna check out my customize menu and you're gonna notice my reserve for power outages is 100%. And this is because I set my reserve at 100% uh, anytime from 8 a.m. up to 2 p.m. And 2 p.m. is when my peak time starts. So at 2 p.m., this will drop down to 0%. And just to review, my price schedule that I set up is right here. It's 1.30 to 8 p.m. So right before my peak starts and then up until when the peak ends, which is at 8 p.m. So this is how I battle the uh, th problems with the Tesla uh, API. So, and I'm gonna show you how you automate this now. I would caveat this with, if you have an excess solar, like a big solar system, then these tips are probably not for you. Um, this is probably more for the folks that may have a smaller solar system or those that uh, need to kind of watch their usage of their power walls with respect to how much energy their solar system uh, is generating. So in my case, I have a, a 3.7 kilowatt system, which is uh, Tesla deems that the small size. And we, are, we have two power walls. So uh, each one's 13.5 kilowatt hours, so we have 27 kilowatt hours of storage that we charge just off a 3.7 kilowatt system. So just for reference, um, that's kind of the situation I'm in. I tried to, you know, become really financially optimized. Just I only bought my power walls to do demand or peak shaving to save money, uh, just doing some power power bill arbitrage because we get much cheaper rates on solar um, than anything else. So uh, the key for me was just keeping demand at zero. All right, before you start, you're going to need some supplies. So first, we're going to need some kind of like computer or server. Um, in this example, I'm going to run Windows just because it's, it's easier for me to show it. Um, so I got like little Windows server here sitting underneath my desk. I used to be a League of Legends player back in the day. And that was before I had kids and just played computer games all day. Um, so we're going to reuse that existing Windows box. And that's what we're going to load our code on. So before I show you exactly how to do it, I'm just going to kind of show you how we have it working so you can get an idea. And I actually, I actually tried to share some of my code on the Facebook forum at first, and uh, someone actually reached out to me one time and wanted to know more about it. And I actually set up a call with them and walked them through it. And it was the first time someone actually paid me money for giving them advice on how to connect their power wall up with the, the code that I set up. So because I, I saw that people were willing to pay me and it was quite a nice gesture, um, thank you for who, whoever I'm speaking about. Um, it made me think that, you know, that there is a need for people to understand how these things work. And there is a need to share the information because Tesla hasn't shared it yet with us how they would uh, control this like in an expert mode. All right, guys, we're gonna start here. So first thing we wanna do is connect to our Wi-Fi um, network of our Tesla Energy Gateway. So what you're gonna do is look in your Wi-Fi networks and we're gonna look for the one that says TEG, Tesla Energy Gateway dash, and then there will be three characters which correspond to your serial numbers of your gateway. So let's find that and let's push connect. 
All right, guys, at least for me, I have to be located closer to the Powerwall Gateway. So I actually moved my laptop here, um, located a little bit physically closer to the Powerwall Gateway. So now I actually see the Wi-Fi network. Um, so right here, I'm looking at my Wi-Fi network. I see the Teg 54B, so I'm gonna click on it. I clicked the wrong one, okay. We're gonna click on Teg 54B. And it's gonna be connecting. If you're asked for a password, it's gonna be one of two things. It's gonna be the last five characters of the gateway serial number, which you find in your Tesla application if you scroll all the way down on your phone, or it's the last five digits of the characters of the sticker. So try one of those, and then you should be able to connect to the gateway. So I'm connected to the TAG 54B gateway, and now if I type TAG in the browser, TAG. Here's a quick tip. If you're trying to figure out what the IP address of the TAG gateway is, you can ping it, say ping in your terminal window. So here I've pinged it, I've pinged ping tag in my MacBook, and I've got the number 192.168.9.1.1. So we're gonna enter that into the browser. You might get this certificate thing. You're just gonna say advance and proceed. Um, if you're familiar with accessing the Tesla Energy Gateway, then you would just normally access the Tesla Energy Gateway as you would. Um, so this is the Tesla Energy Gateway. So in case people aren't familiar with this, this is a, um, a way of accessing the Powerwall through like a laptop connection, something that's not your phone, right? Which means that there's a server that has an API that can talk to your Powerwalls and the Tesla Energy Gateway. Um, so what we're gonna do is kind of expose this server and the calls that this website makes um, to understand how we changed uh, the, the modes that your, your Powerwall runs in. So if this is your first time logging into this screen, it says that it'll be the last five digits of your serial gateway. So log into your Tesla phone app, scroll to the bottom and tap the serial so I'll just enter. A couple times I'm gonna to refer to what's called the gateway serial number. So you, what you, the way you find that is you scroll down in your app and at the bottom it'll say serial tap to reveal. I'm not gonna push it because that is kind of a sensitive information. So um, you can push tap and that'll be your gateway serial number. My digits here. the last five digits or last five characters of the password and then once you enter what we're going to want to make sure is that we have a wi-fi connection so i've already configured mine so um and the reason we need to do this is that we need to be on a network that your windows server that you're about to configure can access so for me, I've already got my Wi-Fi configured, so I'm good here. But if you don't have the Wi-Fi configured here, go ahead and configure the Wi-Fi. I want to take the IP address of where it says for Wi-Fi, because this is what the IP address that we can access our server on, on our Wi-Fi network. So I'm going to switch back to my cloud network. So previously, I was on the um, tag, tag network. So I'm going to switch back to the cloud one. Um, so we're going to take that IP address that we got from our for our Tesla Energy Gateway. We're going to ensure we're on the Wi-Fi network. That's our home Wi-Fi network, whatever that is that you use in your house. We're going to connect to that IP address. You're going to want to notate what this IP address is. So save it away because this is how you're going to communicate to your Tesla Energy Gateway. Um, now we're going to get
And I'm just going to throw up warning signs because a lot of people are going to say that you're going to avoid your warranty and all kinds of stuff. And I'm not going to take any responsibility for it. But um, just fair warning that this is probably where we get into the advanced mode of things. So, um, but for those that want to be hackers, like myself and others um, that are willing to learn, um, let's proceed. So we'll hit login and it's going to ask you for an installer password. We're going to say we forgot our password because we don't know our installer's password. Um, so now it gives us a process for how we get the installer password. I won't do these exact steps, but I'm going to walk through them. So this is how you get an installer password. You're going to first um, toggle your Powerwall. So we're going to toggle. You're going to go to your Powerwall and just turn it off for a second. And then in like one minute, turn it back on. So we're just going to toggle the power on our Powerwalls. We're next going to find the serial number for our backup gateway. Um, you can find this in a number of places. They're saying you can find it inside your gateway um, box that's in your garage or outside. Um, it's going to start with like ST and a bunch of numbers. Um, and the last three digits are also kind of the, the previous Wi-Fi network we connected to. Um, at this point, you'll enter that full, whatever it is, um, gateway serial number. It's like ST and a bunch of digits. It's also on your iPhone application. Um, if you scroll all the way down, or on your cell phone application, if you're not using an iPhone, scroll all the way down, it'll say show gateway serial number. That's the gateway serial number we're going to enter here. Um, you're going to enter this information and it's going to spit out what's called an installer password. It's like six, seven, eight characters. Um, and when you get that installer password, you're going to want to like write that down and store it somewhere because we're going to use it later on. Um, so this is how you get what's called the installer password. And you might have been given this by Tesla already. Um, if you weren't given this, then you're going to have to do these reset steps. Um, and I'm not actually going to do them. Uh, I'll let you guys do that. So once you get what's called the installer password, and we know what IP address we have, we're ready to download our Python scripts. So to download the Python scripts, we're going to go to solarcoder.com, which is my website. Um, and we'll scroll. Okay, so we're going to scroll to where it says January 4th, 2020, newest Powerwall code. Um, and I'll put this link in the description. And you could either copy the code or you can download it. Um, if you want to download it, you just scroll to the bottom and hit the download button for Powerwall Backup PY. That's going to be our backup script. And then there's another script that does a different mode. And we're going to call that our Powerwall time of use. So one script puts it in backup mode, and one script will put it in its um, time of use mode. So that what you would use in like your peak time. Um, so we'll download both those scripts. Right now, we're going to get into the code and start editing it. So um, what you're going to notice is that uh, we have a main function, and then we there'll be a comment that says change these items right here. And remember, we stored away our IP address. I still got my IP address, so if, if this is the same IP address as yours, you would use this. Otherwise, you're going to change it. Um, password here is what your installer password was. So if you had an installer password, that you just generated, that I told you guys to save down, you would write it here. And then the next one here is email. Email is just like whatever your Tesla account email is. Um, all right, we're gonna scroll down a little bit. So what this script does is it's just gonna change your, your, your mode 
to the backup mode. And I'll show that on the app, but also do it on the, um, on the, PC, on the PC as well. So I'll run it on the PC and then we'll look on the phone app that we changed to the backup mode. So what you're gonna also wanna do is we're gonna look through our script and just make sure we're changing a couple different things. Um, right, so on line 159, the username is installer, the password, where it says password ABCDEG, you're gonna put down your installer password, where it says email, you'll put your email. So, um, and there's also a comment here that data should match your criteria. Um, that's on line 159 of the valid token function. And I'm just checking really quick to make sure Right, so I think that's looking good. Um, there's no other place that we need to change here. So we can go ahead and, yeah, it's just line 159, and I don't think there's anywhere else we change. So I'm gonna go ahead, make the code changes and enter my pass, my installer password, as well as uh, my IP address, and then we're gonna run this code. I'm about to run my Python script that I've prepared. So we're gonna run Python, Powerwall Backup PY, also checking my phone. So I'm gonna run Powerwall Backup PY, which is the script that I've modified with those All right, guys, we're going to open Windows Task Scheduler. And in the Task Scheduler library, we're going to say we create a task. And here we'll call it Powerwall. And I usually use two. I use one that's called Backup Mode, and I have one that's called Time of Use Mode. Um, so we'll call it Powerwall. time of use mode, if that was the script, but in this case, we'll just do the backup mode. And then here, we're gonna want to select run with the highest privileges and make sure configure for this. And we can run whether the user's logged in or not. Um, and then in triggers, triggers is where you'll define your schedule. So whether you want to do this weekly or daily or whatever it is, you'll define some cadence. So you'll say, I want this to run, say my, my time of use plan is at 5 a.m. So I'll just run 5 a.m. here. And then I want it to run, you know, on weekdays. So maybe that's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Great. So now I know that this backup mode, I'm going to go at zero. I'm going to go to backup reserve mode to be at 100% uh, at 5 a.m., for, for example. So I'll say OK. And so that's my triggers. And then if you want it to run additional times, you can define new triggers and then keep on going. So if you want like one that runs at 9 a.m., you'd keep doing that. So we'll come to Actions, and here for Actions, we'll say New. And then we're going to type to be PowerShell. It's just capital P and then capital S for Shell. So PowerShell, one word. And then the arguments here will be Python, space, and then 
The next argument should be your Python script. Um, so, and it should be the full path. Um, you can ignore this other output here. This is just if you want to have a log file every time this thing executes. And then, all right guys, so we've got our PowerShell, we entered our arguments, uh, the path of our script, and we'll say okay. For now, just say cancel and then cancel. And then you should notice you have a new task whatever it is, power wall backup mode. Um, and then you may want to test it. So you may want to push run and just make sure, you know, it runs as you expect. You may see the PowerShell prompt uh, come up and probably won't output because it's just running, uh, mine runs on text file. Um, but if you didn't enter a text file, then it, it would have shown the output. Um, and then you want to go back to your Tesla Energy Gateway application and just ensure the mode that you're running in is in backup mode. All right, guys, if you lasted this long, then thank you for staying here. And what I've shown you is something that you can't find, I think, on any other YouTube video. I showed you how to access the Tesla Energy Gateway application on your uh, Wi-Fi network. I showed you how to generate an installer password which comes with some warning signs but you know for hackers it's fine um, we showed you how to install python script and then save it and execute it on the fly plus also running it as a windows task schedule and we saw that it changed the backup mode and the reserve mode um, from zero percent to hundred percent which is perfect for uh, time of use, demand management type plans that your power companies give you. Um, so that's all I got on this video. I'm gonna leave all the links of the code and maybe previous forum posts that I have. And please leave comments, give me a like, um, please subscribe to our channel for more content, and I'll see you on the next video.